The last thing we're going to look at is ground defenses. During any one of the defensive techniques that we've been talking about, things can go bad. You can end up in a bad position where you're on the ground and the guy's above you. This is bad enough in an unarmed encounter, but it is horrific if you have somebody standing over you trying to brain you with a club or a chair. Um, because it's so dangerous, we better look at it specifically in the context of how it can happen during any one of these defenses. Let's get started. All right, the last thing we want to cover in this program is worst case scenario. Now, this is going to be a natural transition into a later series we're going to do on having to full out grapple on the ground against weapons, particularly edge weapons can be very dangerous. But remember, whether we're talking about weapon attacks or unarmed, the chance of being pushed, pulled, or slipping to the ground is really, really high. Now, both people end up on the ground more or less are in the same kind of uh, fight for position with the added problem of, of having an improvised weapon. Edge ones add a real complication to this, that's why that needs a, uh, a whole series in itself. But what we want to look at is being able to maintain that same governing principle, how do I protect myself, particularly against impact weapons. So when he starts swinging an impact weapon, I need to get in the arc of the weapon. I need to jam that attack. That is a crucial element that we've been talking about through this whole program. Now the problem arises where something goes wrong and in real world self-defense, Murphy's Law reigns supreme. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. So we're on an icy uh, street, whatever. I do everything right up to this point. We start jostling for position, he pulls away, and I not only lose control, I slip like this. Now this is a classic Brazilian Jiu Jitsu defensive position. Against a small edged weapon, this isn't bad, and we're gonna talk about this later in a lot of detail when we do the, uh, the grappling with weapons program. But the problem arises now when we're against an impact weapon. If he starts battering down my legs, he's gonna break my legs and then he's gonna to get to me. So I'm, I'm actually in a worse position when it comes to an impact weapon. So what we wanna do is look at a simple way to be able to maintain that idea of getting in the arc of the weapon, okay? This is how we are still able to enter and pounce from the ground position. So he winds up, batter up, I'm able to enter, but we start jostling here, he pulls away and I go down. As he winds up to swing, I need to re-enter. Okay, now the way I do that is by switching the relationship of my legs and my head. My legs are going to kick off in one direction and my head is going to come forward. This allows me to enter in the same way with the same kind of power and the same kind of commitment. In wrestling, this is simply known as a windshield wiper. I go this way as a drill. I'm going to sit up and I can go this way. So I have to drill this so it becomes instantaneous. The moment I hit the ground and I know that he's got this impact weapon hit, boom, I need to get off the ground and in. This originally evolved from, from Filipino martial arts. I first saw this 25 years ago in Filipino martial arts where they were uh, training stick to stick. And one guy would go to the ground, come to here, and the concept was the same. You didn't want to have your legs ahead of your weapon, so they would go to here and work their way back up. So I took that idea and started realizing we can use this as a way to enter. Now you see this as a standard technique in, uh, in MMA. It's used all the time by one guy who's been on the ground against the guy who's standing. It's a great way to be able to make leg tackles from the ground. So a lot of people have arrived at the same conclusion. Let's look at it one more time. It's really pretty simple. When I'm here, he winds up. I need to switch the relationship of my legs. That's how I can enter and still get inside the arc of that weapon, even though it looks like I'm in a very vulnerable position. Okay, let's look at some drilling for this uh, windshield wiper attack position. First of all, I also want to reiterate that for the purpose of demonstration, we were sometimes using actual implements and weapons, but of course, when you're drilling and training, you've got to use padded weapons for safety and to, uh, to give you the, the confidence that if you make a mistake, Nothing's going to happen. No negative impacts. <clears throat> now, the only difficult part about this windshield wiper is it needs to be ingrained. So the drill is really simple. Have your partner stand here in the position. 
and you're going to be on your back. Now the hard part is getting used to the idea that this common defensive position that's used throughout Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and is really in most circumstances a strong defensive position. You're pulling your target which is usually the head away and you're able to put a barrier in between you and the bad guy and you can attack with, with kicks and things. Now the problem when we're dealing with a heavy impact weapon is this leg no longer acts as a barrier. These legs become a target. So we have what is usually a really good defensive position. Everything changes when we're in the context of an impact weapon. So he can just stand there at first. You can see it and get used to the idea. Whoops, I kick my legs behind me and my head comes forward and I can do something like a low single like that. Then I just switch sides. And I get used to making this motion as smooth and po as possible. Now, if he was to start swinging, my head should go inside that arc like we talked about. I can tackle him here or I can stand up and go to a, a leg tackle, something like that. As you get better, he can actually just make a rhythmic swing in a continuous motion as you do your windshield wiper. And you can see how your head is moving to either side of the arc and you're making the same kind of life-saving pouncing motion as you would standing up. All right, so to wrap things up, we want to make it clear to people that we're basing this program on the statistical realities. Not what people think, not what people wish to happen, but what actually happens on the streets and in the bars and clubs all over North America and the rest of the world. The point we're trying to, to make here is these defenses are usable in all kinds of weapon attacks, but statistically the most common ones that are actually going to attack you are improvised weapons. The idea that you should be fearful of the secret ninja or the uh, army commando. These are the only guys that know how to use weapons and man, if they attack you, you can't defend yourself and all this other nonsense. Maybe that's true, but the facts are they're not going to attack you. Ordinary, unskilled people who become enraged and grab ordinary implements are the ones that are actually the real threat. And we need to recognize that and train realistically. Thanks and I'll see you next time.